I might lose my mind Waking when the sun's down Riding all these highs Waiting for the calm down Walk these streets with me I'm doing decently Just glad that I can be Yeah I'm trying to realize It's alright to not be fine On your own Now I'm shaking, drinking all this coffee Last few weeks have been exhausting I'm lost in my imagination And there's one thing that I need from you Can you come through? We had a breaking point. Yesterday, it finally happened. I was driving this, go pick up my daughter from one of her activities. I saw a black car up right next to me as I rolled up to the stop sign and that took off from the stop sign hard. And the other car didn't seem to take off from the stop sign hard. And then all of a sudden, it was past me by a car. And I was in the middle of shifting into second gear. And then I shifted into third gear. And then I went into fourth gear. And I never did close the distance that car put on me. <laughs> well, we're coming back from our trip. And uh, we almost had to get towed home again. Daggum. Started running on one cylinder, and if it wasn't a standard, I wouldn't have been able to get it home. It cut off right here in front of the garage, and I pushed it in the garage. We pulled the plugs. I had fuel literally coming out of the front of the turbo onto the hood. I could smell it. I went down here to check the intercooler hose down here. Of course, you know, this thing was bottomed out, loose as could be. Been leaking boost the whole time. I've been fiddling with the boost controller. So, I pulled the plugs, let it dry out yesterday. We'll put the plugs back in. We'll find some hose clamps, put on this intercooler down here that actually tighten. We're gonna see if this thing has that starting issue again. We're gonna check this coolant temp sensor. We're gonna check the spark on this thing. We're gonna see what we lost yesterday by pulling the fuse when it's running. It's really odd. I have a sneaking suspicion that that fuse popped because uh, my fuel pump might be going bad. It's weird because the other one outside, it needs a fuel pump too. I'm like, dang, can y'all just stop? So we're charging the battery back here. So much to work on. So little time. And there's another one that isn't even home yet that I got to work on. It's nice to have a portable fan. But it's even nicer to have a socket that fits these little clamps if you don't have it. Boy, you're going to be hurt. This is an S4. Yeah. Look at all the junk. Okay, this is the one I pulled out of the car. It's got an aftermarket pump on it. Little tiny wires, but... What has happened is this fuel line has disintegrated, like completely disintegrated. It's kinked, you can tell it's probably spraying out and leaking. It's falling apart and crud's all over the place. The padding that was around the pump, that is all falling apart and decrepit. So we're gonna cut this wire. But I wanted you to see the difference between these two cinder units. Now this is a 92, 940SE. We can call it a 960. It's got a steel top, small wire. This one has a plastic top with bigger wire. This is a 94 turbo 940. As you can see, this pump is a lot better off. This is a Bosch 
Bosch unit. Nice filter. Everything's intact and on. This is how they should be. It's even got these little doohickeys right here. This does not. But look at the size of the wire, guys. Big difference, right? This is how you upgrade your pumps. Put thicker wire on, first off. But make sure that this doesn't degrade inside your tank. Anyway, I'm going to whip this bad boy off. Switch this switch this unit over to that unit and throw this unit back in Interesting enough be a good thing to upgrade your little clamps here. There's this guy. I mean, I just move around such a hard time with that. Zip ties, all kinds of stuff. I've done it before too. Funny thing about it is we should know better, dude. The little thing hooks. It's got a little hook right there. You just pop the little hooks at both ends, man. That's all it is. Look at it. Little tiny hooks. Don't let it outsmart you. <laughs> no fish. None. So it looks like it's going to be okay. I think it'll run again. biggest pain in the ass of this after you get comfortable being in the trunk is moving these hoses out of the way to clear everything specifically this one right here this one this one is right here it's gonna haunt you in your dreams man you have to move this out of the way to clear the nipples over here it's just terrible on about the tenth start it started smoothly disconnect oh, never a good sign when you're taking the intake manifold off and it's dripping because it's full of fuel lucky day for me good grief dude this injector right here number three it was full to the top and it was leaking and it's still dripping nothing wired up to it so Definitely got an injector problem straight off the bat. Mm -hmm. All that is the 85. From the intake being full of fuel, good thing I didn't turn it over.
a little bit of grinding, maybe a day or two. This dude is open. If you look right there in the center, you can see that black gap. And it's hung wide open, so I'm gonna try to put a battery on it and see if I can, I don't know, unstick it maybe? Shoot, who knows. two is better than one. It's not the size of the hole of the head of the valve. It's the size of the opening around the head of the valve. And if you have two of them, that's always going to be better than one, as you can see. Plain and simple. Because that valve never opens the size of that hole, right? No, it only cracks open a smidge. And there's your crack open. And big chunks of nasty tar-like substance I scraped off my screwdriver tip that came from in here right down where the injector sprays on the bottom floor of the intake. You can see a lot of that one's still there. Some of that's still there. I scraped and used some uh, scrubbing bubbles on aluminum it works real good and then I used some alcohol and then I took a flat headed screwdriver and just started scrubbing in there and pulling everything out big sticky compound will make for difficult hot starts you know where all the gas is absorbed in the sticky spot it doesn't run down the motor not helping uh, correction not gas that would be E85 E85 is doing that. I need to run some gas through it and pickle it. That should clean most of that up. Well, here's the deal. We're going to share car videos on our Turbo World channel, just like everybody's been requesting. Okay? We're gonna do car stuff, and then we're gonna do all the other stuff that we wanna share on Rumble. And that's just the way it's gonna be. Because, you know, my daughter still needs an education fund. And even though it's still growing, it's only 900 bucks for seven years of video making and 600 and some odd videos, you know, it's something. And uh, it matters to me to contribute. So all this work that we're doing is for her and for her college fund on this Turbo World channel. And that's the way it's always been. I still haven't taken my first withdrawal from this account. The money's still there. I haven't collected any earnings and it's gonna continue to collect until they decide that they can take it all away, you know. But this is what we're gonna do. So car stuff, woohoo, celebrate. Yay, Turbo World is back, y'all. So right down in here is where we're going. I'm sure you can see that just fine. Right along the queue with everything else in this video. It is super easy to film. My easiest film is getting rid of You are 19 millimeter socket deep. Still strong. There's the temperature, so we're looking at about 82 in the pool. That's in the radiator, so it's going to be cooler. I'm thinking about 81 in the motor. And then I looked in here and remembered, oh yeah, there's this feature here that already does it for us. It shows me the thing, and I forgot all about it. So 81 degrees Fahrenheit, I'll be darned. Go into tools, okay. Go into thermosistor. And you can go down through each one of these and set you know, through a list, 
And so I was checking a bunch, you know what I mean? Checking a bunch. And uh, the Saab one is pretty close at 81. I used that one and I got it. So we're going to work with that one right there. But there's a lot of options here. I didn't try all of them, but I tried the main ones. GM, Chrysler, Ford, Saab, Mazda, Mitsubishi, Toyota. I thought Mitsubishi was going to be the closest. And then uh, I reset it back to the Bosch and for some odd reason it went down 10 degrees on the next reset the first reset it was 92 so I don't know it's weird 